We stood together in the silent realization of what had just happened. I remember looking at everyone, seeing how broken, how terrified, and how vulnerable they looked. Their eyes were wide, their bodies were shaking, and seeing that, I felt a need to protect them, to love them. I hugged every person there. I wiped their tears. I whispered words of comfort that we both knew were lies. I combed glass out of hair. I rocked them and told them to breathe, and then I could breathe. The minutes felt like hours, and it seemed like my entire life had slowed down so I could feel everything in this moment. The one thing I'll never forget is the people. I hugged more people that day than I did in a lifetime. Calloused hands, perfumed hair, strangers rocking me back and forth as if I was theirs. The people seemed to go on for miles. Cars lined up in silent solidarity with the tragedy that had taken place. Mothers crying out in war, seeing their child in my face. We were a circus. Come one, come all. Watch the children fall on their knees and beg for forgiveness for a crime they didn't commit. An atrocious scene of children with bloody knees and bruised hearts with battered minds and wide eyes. I called my mother, breath shaky, eyes fighting the urge to close. What do you even say? I wondered. What can I say to even begin? I breathed out and said, I don't know if I'm dead. I said, the bus crashed and I think the driver is dead. My voice broke at the confession. When I was still on the bus, I looked at him and I recalled the emptiness and the stillness, the emptiness that I feel always, the stillness I saw in a hospital bed as I prayed to a merciful God to save my loved one. All we wanted to do was go home. Why couldn't we have just <coughs> gone home? The beauty and the heartbreak of death. People tell you to be relieved, to be happy. They're in a place with no pain and they can live freely. But what if that place was with me? I could have created a paradise. They could have been happy with me. What about my pain? Human nature is a selfish one, and if everything happens for a reason, then why must I suffer through it? Why must grief be so harrowing, so hollowing? It tears at you until you are nothing but a void, a glass with all of its contents empty. How can you ever be full again, you wonder? Life takes so much from me. It has taken more than I have. There is nothing left in this body. The suffocating vessel that I call home. I spoke to what felt like millions of people. The same recycled words, the same shaking hands, the same bloodied feet. I walk on a graveyard that stretches until the end of time. And one day you'll step on me too and you won't even notice. The days that followed were a blur. I cried until my body dried up. I couldn't sleep. I couldn't eat. I watched shows of people smiling and laughing and I found it aggravating. How can anyone smile? How can anyone even breathe in this place? How can you enjoy life when there are others that don't even have it? I looked at myself in the mirror and I wondered why. What set me apart from the two deceased? What made me worthy of this beautiful and yet guilty gift that I own? And I realized that I felt so deeply that I had caused the accident. And I realized now that I've done that my entire life. Death comes so suddenly, there is no way to even pinpoint that a person will leave you. I value logic, and it's not logical that a person just disappears. One day they're there, and the next they aren't. I want reason. I want something to be angry at. I want a perpetrator. And for all of these years, I've chosen myself. I thought that if I told my aunt I loved her more, she wouldn't have overdosed. I thought that if I told more to the doctors, then my uncle would have been saved. I thought that if I'd sat just two seats in front of me, a mother would be able to embrace her daughter again. It's easier to be angry with yourself than to face the unknown. Life is cruel, but in pain you can create beauty. In suffering, there is calmness if you are broken that gives you the opportunity to glue yourself back together. I can pick up the pieces of shattered glass sprawled around me, and instead of letting it cut me, I can piece it back together to make something beautiful. A piece of glass from every heartbreak, every triumph I've ever faced, and I find myself a picture of vulnerability, of grace, survival. I don't consider myself a brave person. I just think that life is the greatest gift anyone can have and my job right now is to make my life enough. Today, I'm 14. My heart beating is the drum in my life. I'm not whole. I'm not who I was before, but that girl, the one who survived and continues to survive every day, that girl who sees a dove and thinks of Riley Walker, the girl who loves and loves and lives and lives, <coughs> she is a part of me. 
her brokenness and her pain sit beside me, and when she cries, I don't break. I hold her and tell her that one day it will be okay. I tell her that one day I will be happy. One day I will have people who love me, who hold me up when I fall, and I won't forget what happened. But it won't suffocate me anymore because shattered was once whole. Thank you so much.